Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Alice Fay, Ray Meland, and Robert Preston in Alexander's Ragtime Band. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The real history of our time isn't all in the textbooks. Some of it's in the songbooks. And if you look under the name of Irving Berlin, you'll find songs that represent a whole chapter in the American saga. That history has never been told but it's been whistled and sung on the broadways and byways of America for more than 30 years. The first Irving Berlin song hit, Paved the Way for the Jazz Age, was the granddaddy of swing and gives the title to tonight's play, Alexander's Ragtime Band. This is the story of a singer, a songwriter, and an orchestra leader who started as a professional trio and became an emotional triangle. It begins in the days before the World War, and as it comes down the years, you'll hear those Irving Berlin songs that are linked with the memories of our own time. As the singer in this cavalcade of melody, Alice Fay has the same part she played in the picture. In fact, playing singers of the more glamorous kind seems to be a very special talent with this young lady, the most recent evidence being her success in Darrell Zanuck's 20th Century Fox production, Lillian Russell. The second member of our dramatic triangle is Ray Meland as the orchestra leader, the Alexander of Alexander's Ragtime Band. It's a perfect part for Ray, and I, I think you'll like what he does with it. In the role of the songwriter, we've cast Robert Preston, now one of Paramount's brightest stars, but when I first met him, just an attendant in a parking lot. As an actor, Bob had his first big chance in my production, Union Pacific, and has gone from there to a starring role in my next picture, Northwest Mounted Police so you can see what I think of him. We've set the stage for a fine performance here, and if you'd like to do the same, just star Lux Flakes in your home. Millions have done that already, and their applause for Lux Flakes comes back to us all the time. Now our stage is set for Alexander's Ragtime Band, and the curtain rises on the first act, starring Alice Fay as Stella Kirby, Robert Preston as Charlie Dwyer, and Ray Meland as Alexander, first known as Rod Grant. San Francisco, the Barbary Coast, 1913. Get out of here, you two bit tenors. The next time you want to sing, try some other joint. Oh! The man with the belligerent voice is a beefy gentleman known as Dirty Eddie, proprietor of Dirty Eddie's Cafe, pride of the coast. The gentleman reclining on the sidewalk committed an unforgivable sin. He sang a sour note while entertaining Eddie's select clientele, composed mostly of thugs from the waterfront. As Eddie stands glowering in the swinging doors, a girl comes from the street, stepping carefully over the fallen tenor. Hello, Eddie. What was that, a coming out party? Uh, the bum sings off key. I should have killed him. Oh, you must be kind of hard to please tonight. Maybe I shouldn't have come. Well, what do you want, sister? Well, there wouldn't be fresh air in this cute little cottage. Go on inside. What's on your mind, sister? They tell me you're going in for music. Well, here I am. Yeah? What do you play? I don't play. I sing, and good. I've been up at Lefty's for three months. Well, if you're so good, why aren't you there now? Well, Lefty got fresh, and I quit. I, I, I know I'll be safe here, though. Yeah, you'll be safe here. Sure, like in a volcano. <laughs> Sense of humor, huh? Listen, I'm going to knock you right out of your seat tonight, mister. I've got a song here that's dynamite, brand new. Nobody on the Barbary Coast ever heard anything like it. You must have wrote it yourself, huh? No, a friend of mine sent it to me from New York. Just while you hear it. Let's see the music. Yeah, Alexander's Ragtime Band. Never heard of it. I told you it was new. Let me sing it, will you? Please? Okay. Stick around a while. I'll tell you when. Thanks. 
Hey, Stella. Stell. Well, for crying out loud, never. Hiya, Stell. Well, am I glad to see you. Oh, sit down, will you? I ain't seen you since the fifth grade. Say, did you ever learn long division? No, I never even learned short division, but I'm doing all right without it. <laughs> hey, Stepper, Roger says we're all set. Okay. Hey, Charlie, I want you to meet Stella Kirby. Stella, this is Charlie Dwyer, the best piano player in Frisco. Hello, Miss Kirby. Hello. Say, do you fellas play here? No, not yet. We're just trying to get the job. We're going to play for Eddie right now. Yeah, well, I'm singing for him later. Meet you out on the sidewalk, Mr. <laughs> Dwyer. <laughs> How many of you are there? Oh, just five, counting Rod. Uh, Rod Grant, he's the leader. Grant? Yeah. I don't think I know him. No, nobody knows any of us. That's the whole trouble. But Rod's got some pretty good ideas. We get a break soon, maybe. <laughs> all right, Charlie, come on, Stella. Ready to start. Oh, excuse me. Oh, that's all right. Oh, this is Stella Kirby, Rod. Uh, Rod Grant. Hello. How do you do? Now, look, Charlie, in that last part, I want the piano soft, understand? And you too, Snapper. You're coming in too strong. I want everything soft and dreamy. Okay, Rod. Now, one more thing. Well, I'll you... leave you gentlemen to your knitting. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Kirby. Oh, don't mind me. See you around, Snapper. Nice girl, isn't she? Charlie, keep your mind on your business. All right, you guys. Get started. All set, Miss Reddy? Well, go ahead. And you better be good, too, see? Oh, don't worry about that. No, I'll leave the worrying to you guys. Go on, now, one piece. Thanks, Mr. Reddy. All right, boys. Hey, Rod. Rod, wait, wait. The music. What about the music? Well, it, it's gone. It's gone. But you had it, Charlie. I saw it. Oh, well, I, I, I must have left it on the streetcar. But you couldn't do that. Well, I did. Well, what'll we do now? Say, are you guys going to play or not? Uh, yes, sir, right away. Hey, Rod, look, look. Here's the music here on the chair. Wait, let me see it. Alexander's Ragtime Band. Oh, what's that? What's it look like, Rod? Well, it looks like... The... I don't know what it looks like. But well, we've got to play something. So come on. All right, boys? Okay, Rod. Pass it out, Charlie. Yeah. Hey, look, Rod, if they start throwing bottles, I'll meet you on a ferry. Hey, what is this stuff? Oh, come on, Davey. Just do your best. We're in a spot. Let's go. Hey, Rod, Rod, I don't get it. What kind of rhythm is this? I don't know. It's kind of crazy. Oh, that guy will murder us for this. Music you oh, please, playing. please, don't interrupt but us now. But that's my music. I'm supposed to sing that song. Where'd you find it? Please, Miss Kirby. No. Hey. Hey, fellas. I got it. Just loosen up a little bit. Hit it. Come on. That's a new group. That's my song, and I'm going to sing it. Come on and hear. Come on and hear. Alexander's Ragtime Band. Come on and hear. Come on and hear. It's the best band in the land. They can play a bugle call like you never heard before. So natural that you want to go to war That's just the bestest band what I am Oh, my honey lamb Come on along, come on along Let me take you by the hand Up to the man, up to the man Who's the leader of the band And if you care to hear the Swanee River Played in ragtime Come on and hear, come on and hear Alexander's ragtime band yeah. Hey! <laughs> Listen, you crook. What's the idea of swiping my music? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Kirby, but... Oh, don't put any of that sorry stuff on me. The minute my back was turned, trying to set yourself in here with my stuff. Well, I didn't know that was your song. Oh, I, I just... All right, kids, that's dynamite. You're in, sister. Who's in? The whole bunch. Don't hook me up with this outfit. I came here to get a job for myself, not for this crowd. It was my music and my singing that put them over. They don't know how to play. They're rotten. Oh, I suppose just because you can stand up here and shout, you know everything about music. Ah, uh, fight it out among yourselves. But it's all of you or nothing. A beer for Mr. Alexander's ragtime band on the house. Hey, my name's Alexander. It's Roger Grant. It's Alexander mm -hmm. to me from now on. So I don't know music, huh? Well, maybe I don't know the trite they play up on Snob Hill, but I know what they like down here. And that's more than you'll ever know. And if you think that I'm going to work with you, hey, you've got to... Hey, 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 take it easy, take it easy. What gave you the idea I'd even have you in my band? In your band? Give me my music. Hey, now, wait a minute. This is a situation. Let's try and figure it out. I've got it all figured out. I don't want anything to do with you. Is that plain fancy pants? Always a pleasure to meet a lady. Good night, Miss Kirby. Ah, uh, good night, you... Oh, you... now, wait, wait. Be a little reasonable. Reasonable? What do you take me for, a half -wit? Well, don't pay any attention to Roddy. He was just shooting off his mouth. Now, you stick with us for a while. We all need the job. Yeah, I wouldn't stay here if it was the last job on earth. I've seen all I want of that pain in the neck. Then you won't stick? I told you no. You know, Miss Kirby, I got an idea. I can talk you into it. Ah, sit down. All right, folks. Step in the dirty eddies. Alexander's ragtime band with Stella Kirby. 
Kirby. Shipping the journey and in. Around the bird of paradise to be. That Alexander Frank time back. That's Stella Kirby. I'm in the hero of each show. Opening tonight at Dickie Jones. Alexander's ragtime band, the hottest music on the coast, with the queen of ragtime, Stella Kirby, and the finest fish dinner in town. Come in. Oh, hello. What do you want? Just wanted to see how you look. Oh, don't worry about me. I look swell. Well, it's a pretty important opening for us. Well, this dress will do. It ought to. Cost me my last dime. Uh-huh. You don't think it's a little uh, flashy, do you? What do you mean? Well, all those feathers. You shouldn't hide your beautiful throat under feathers. Take them off. Well, now, 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 wait a minute. And those phony flowers, you don't need them. It's just like gilling the lily. Hey, hey, give me, give and me I'm my... I'm afraid you'll have to take off that jewelry, too. Why, you too, by poor snob. Get out of here. I'll wear what I like. You're not dressing for your sale of friends now. I'm trying to build a band that is class and distinction, and I'm beginning tonight. Well, let me tell you something. I know how to dress, and you and nobody else is going to tell me what to wear. Do you understand? Well, you're not going out there looking like a comic valentine, and stop shouting. I'll go out the way I want, or I won't go at all. All right. Okay. Suits me, too. Hey, Alex, that pickle-faced owner's throwing a fit out there. We better hop to it. You ready, Stella? I'm not going. Oh, now, Stella, cut out. Oh, the... let her do what she wants. I don't want a woman with a band anyway. Oh, here we go again. Oh, what a sap I was to ever let you talk me into this. I knew how it would end with that conceited... Now, Stella, I'm surprised that you... He didn't mean anything by it. He's just a little excited. New place, couple of new boys. Oh, you can't let us down now. Oh, there you go, sticking up for him. Look what he did to my feathers. I should have slapped his ears down. Yeah, well, you can do that tomorrow. You've got to sing now. Sing? I'll see him dead first. All right, then. Don't sing for Alex. Uh... Sing for me, hmm? please, Stella. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> now you're talking. Come on. Oh, right, but you're just taking advantage of my good nature. <laughs> <laughs> That's a girl. Just remember the three musketeers. All for one. Yeah, and that one's a pain in the neck. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now come on outside. What for? I want you to get acquainted with Alex. What are you talking about? <laughs> Hurry up, Charlie. Hey, just a second, Alex. I want you to meet Miss Kirby. What? Say, what is this? Miss Kirby, this is Alex. Oh, I believe we've met before. Sure, but mm. forget it. You're meeting for the first time right now. And take those chips off your shoulders. It's not polite. Now, what do you say? We gotta be good tonight. What does he say? Well, I guess Charlie's right. You and I have entirely different points of view, Miss Kirby. But we've both grown up, and I don't see why, with a little common sense, we can't work together. Listen, you're out to set the world on fire. You're all hopped up with the idea that you've got something to give and you're going to do it or bust. Well, that's your business. But don't try to make it my business. All I'm trying to do is to earn a living. All I want is a job, and this job's as good as another. As long as I can pay my own way and as long as you leave me alone. Yeah, but listen, you've got a great voice and a great future, too. If you'd only realize your possibilities and try to make something of them... Listen, I'm doing all right. I am what I am, and I'm not going to let you make me over into something else just to fit your plans. Well, I guess I have been unreasonable only seeing my side of it. But all this means a lot to me. Music, having my own band. And whether we like it or not, we seem to be tied up together. We couldn't get this job without you, and you probably couldn't get it without us. Now, doesn't it seem sensible to try and meet each other halfway? Okay. <laughs> oh, there you are. You see how easy it is? Yeah, but something tells me I'm sticking my head in a noose. <laughs> Alexander's Ragtime Band. Now on their fifth week at the Cliff House. How do you like it, Charlie? Well, it's a long way from the Barbary Coast. Yeah, and it's only the first step. We're just beginning. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Stella. Hey, rehearsal's not till three. <laughs> I know, but I thought I'd get over a little early. Say, you look swell. Isn't that another outfit? Yes. I'm afraid it's too loud. Is it, Charlie? No, I think it's great. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if you realize how much you've changed in the last few months. What do you mean, changed? Just because I pay more for my clothes and let my hair go natural? Oh, that may be part of it. <laughs> oh, I see. You mean I'm getting to be a lady, more refined and agreeable. Well, you're wrong. I'm just trying to save myself a lot of arguments. Oh, sure. It burns you up to get prettier every day. I suppose it would just about break your heart if anybody told you you were blossoming into the most beautiful, the most charming... Oh, I'd call him a liar to his face. All right, I'm a liar. <laughs> Say, 
What's that you're playing? Oh, just a little hit tune I've been working on. You mean you wrote it? You? That's right. You like it? Like it? Say, it's great. It, it's marvelous. Hey, hey, take it easy. <laughs> no, on the level, it, just imagine you having that in you. Well, I wrote it for you, Stella. If it's any good, that's why. Oh, thanks, Charlie. I, I'd love to sing it. Sure. Yeah, I'll speak to Alex. Maybe we can work it in tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our next number is being sung tonight for the first time. It was written by one of the boys in the band, Charlie Dwyer. Charlie Dwyer! Now that we have met, the world may know the sentimental story, the greatest romance they ever knew is waiting to unfold. Now it can be told as an Inspiration. Every other tale of boy meets girl is just an imitation. The great love story has never been told before. But now, now it can. Stella! Charlie, take over, will you? Yeah, sure. Stella, you are marvelous. I never knew you could sing like that. Didn't you? You ought to listen sometime. I was listening tonight. I had a feeling that... Stella, you weren't singing that song for somebody, were you? I mean, somebody in particular? Maybe. That's what I thought. I'm afraid to ask who. You don't have to be. You probably know you're conceited enough. Oh, Stella. Oh. oh, imagine you and me like this. What happened, Alex? Don't ask me. I guess the roof fell in on us. The minute I started to sing that song. Look up here. That's for tonight. And that's for all the times I wanted to break your neck. <laughs> and this is for all the times I wanted to slap your ears down. Oh, Alex, do you suppose we've been in love with each other all, all of this time? Oh, me? In love with a girl who wears feathers? Not in your life. <laughs> well, you were no Christmas bargain yourself. <laughs> oh, darling, don't you understand? I'm an artist like Pygmalion. Like who? Oh, just a Greek who took a hunk of marble and molded it and polished it into a beautiful woman. And then he fell in love with it. Oh. oh, so you've just fallen in love with your own statue. That's it. Oh, no. No, you fell in love with me the first time you ever saw me. Feathers and everything. I guess you're right. Oh, this is the real thing, isn't it? The realest thing that's ever happened. Mm -hmm. When did you decide to come back? Oh, Charlie, I'm sorry. I... Oh, Charlie, listen. No, don't say a word. Don't apologize. Don't explain. <laughs> I know all about it. You see, I was there when it happened. What? You were where? <laughs> I pour out my heart in a song to a dame, and she takes it and pours out her heart to the boss. Well, it was a good song, Charlie, and if you, if you hadn't written it, the lady and I might have gone on through life just slugging each other. Well, when's the wedding? Oh, don't be so practical. He's just started courting me. Sure, we're just business partners. No. Oh. Well, then I guess it's all right to talk business. Charles Dillingham's in town. Dillingham? Yeah, the big producer himself. I read it in the paper. Oh, Alex, this is the break you've been waiting for. Where's the telephone? Get me a phone, get me a phone. He's got to hear us. And if you care to hear the Swanee River Played in right time Come on and hear, come on and hear 
Come in quick. Did you speak to Dillingham? What did he say? Oh, Alex, it's wonderful. He wants me to go to New York. New York? Mm -hmm. He's going to make me a star. Oh, darling, isn't it the most wonderful thing you've ever heard? Everything you've wanted for me. Yes, but, but what about the band? Well, he says he can't use the band now, but he'll find a place for you later. Oh. Isn't it marvelous? Can you believe it? And you're going? Well, of course I'm going. I see. Well, what did you expect me to do? Turn it down? It, it's the biggest break I'll ever get. Well, at least you might have talked to me about it first. I'd just go ahead and say yes without even thinking of me. But, Alex, this isn't going to make any difference with us. We can still be together. You can come on to New York, too, and get a job. I, I know Dillingham will find a spot for you. That'll be great. But you've told me over and over again that I could make something of myself if I tried. And now just because it's happened, you you're all burned up. Well, it serves me right expecting anything from you. Of all the selfish little tin horn sports. You're jealous because he wants me and not you. And all that molding and polishing. You weren't doing that for me. You were doing it for yourself because you thought it would help you get ahead. And now that it's backfired and helped me, you're yelling murder. Oh, go on. Go to New York. Go with him. Don't think I won't. Don't think you wouldn't do the same thing if you had the chance. Alex, don't let her go like that. You go and tell her you were wrong before it's too late. Oh, so you're siding with her again. I'm wrong and she's right. Sure, you don't own Stella. You can't order her around. She has the right to decide for herself if she doesn't know the band a thing. <laughs> We're liable to be stuck here the rest of our lives. Is that the way you feel about it? Yes, I do. And why are you sticking around? Why don't you clear out, too? All right. That's a good idea. Hiya, Charlie. Yeah. Sure. Well, Maestro, when does Alexander's Ragtime Band hit Broadway, it huh? It doesn't. What? There isn't any Alexander's Ragtime Band. In just a moment, we raise the curtain on Act Two of Alexander's Ragtime Band with Alice Faye, Ray Milland, and Robert Preston. Well, it's June again, and that means graduation time and school parties for millions of young people all over the country. It was graduation time a year or so ago for Mary Coppersmith, a charming girl down in Mobile, Alabama. Her mother, Mrs. A.J. Coppersmith, wrote us, For one of the last big school dances, I made Mary a lovely sheer printed evening dress with the skirt measuring eight or ten yards round. <laughs> it seemed a little impractical, but Mary just had to have it. At the dance. Like to go out in the garden for a while, Mary? I'd love to. Mm, isn't it beautiful tonight? Mm, swell. Let's take a turn around the campus. That'd be grand. I want one last look at it in the moonlight. Uh -huh. well, watch your dress. It's awfully dusty here. Well, when Mary got home... Oh, Mother, just look at the bottom of my skirt. It's horribly dirty. Oh, honey, with all the red clay ground into it. I'm afraid the dress is ruined. What are we going to do? I've got to have something for the garden party and open house at school. We certainly can't afford to get you another dress. Could you possibly wash this? Mm, I don't know. Oh, Mother, please try. I'll tell you what. I'll try washing it in Lux Flakes. They're so gentle. Well, I did just that. I dipped the dress up and down in lukewarm Lux suds and then rinsed it carefully. Every bit of the soil came out and the dress looked as lovely as ever. That one experience saved us nearly $10. Naturally, I think Lux is simply wonderful. And so do millions of other women. They're more enthusiastic than ever now because of new quick Lux. It's so wonderfully fast. In water as cool as your hand, it dissolves three times as fast as any of 10 other leading soaps tested. It's the quick, easy care for everything safe in water alone. And thrifty care, too. Do you know why? Because new Quick Lux goes further, gives more suds, ounce for ounce, even in hard water, than any of the other soaps tested. And of course, it has the same marvelous Lux purity that you've always known, the famous safety that has made Lux the leading care for fine fabrics the country over. 
When you place your order tomorrow, get the thrifty big box of New Quick Lux. It comes in the same familiar package, costs you no more, will keep your nice things, washable silks, rayons, cottons, and woolens, new-looking longer. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Alexander's Ragtime Band, starring Alice Faye as Stella Kirby, Ray Milland as Alexander, and Robert Preston as Charlie Dwyer. It's January, 1919. The world is just beginning to relax after the horrors of the war. On Broadway on a cold, gusty morning, Alex makes his way slowly toward the Globe Theater. He's still in uniform, but the old jauntiness is gone. His face is tired and gray, and he leans heavily on a cane. In the lobby, he stands for a moment reading the playbill. Charles Dillingham presents Stella Kirby. In come one, come all. Then he turns slowly and limps toward the stage entrance. All right, everybody on stage, please. We'll run through that last scene. Oh, Miss Kirby, will you stand by, please? Right here. Anybody got a cigarette? Try one of mine. <sighs> Why, Alex? Alex, where in the world? Come outside. All right, send that in here, will you? Send it in. Oh, Alex, it's good to see you. I saw your name out front. I thought I'd just drop in and... When did you get back? Oh, a couple of days ago. Oh, that's wonderful. Are you, are you all right? Oh, sure. Did you get up to the front? Off and on. But... but you didn't get hit. No, not a scratch. And then why are you... Oh, you mean the cane? Well, mm -hmm. that's just a little fad I picked up on the other side. Without my walking stick, I'd feel a little bit undressed. Mm -hmm. I tried to see you before you left, Alex. You did? I didn't know. You were doing that show for the army here in New York. I was there the last night. When I went backstage, you'd gone. Well, it's too bad we didn't get together, Stella. I wanted to tell you how sorry I was, for, well, for everything. Will you forgive me? Of course I will. I've never stopped loving you. Alex. Oh, let's get out of here. I, I just can't stand here just talking. I want to put my arms around you and tell you that I... Oh, Alex, please. You, you don't know what it's been like wanting you every second. You've never been out of my mind. I don't care what's happened, and neither do you. We belong to each other. Alex. Alex, don't you know? Know what? Well, Charlie and I have been married for more than a year. I'm sorry. I thought you knew. No. No, I didn't. Miss Stella, Mr. Dillingham has an idea that... Hey. Uh, hello, Charlie. Alex, how are you? Oh, fine. You, you just got back? That's right. Just dropped around to say hello. Oh, I'm... Glad you did, Alex. <laughs> Sorry I wasn't with you over there. I, I never got further than Hoboken. Yeah, well, I, I see you did the songs for Seth Stella's new show. Well, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. But blame it on Stella. She cracked the whip. Well, it's been great seeing you two again. Hey, can't you stay and have lunch with us? No, no. Sorry. I got a couple of fellas waiting to see me. Goodbye, Stella. Goodbye. So long, Charlie. So long? He's changed a lot, hasn't he? Yes. In some ways. Now look, Alex, here's the setup. We round up some of the boys. Maybe Snapper, maybe Ed, if we can find him, and you and me. And we put Alexander's ragtime band right back on the map. What do you say? Have another drink, Dave. Oh, no, listen, will you? Jerry here has swell pipes, haven't you, Jerry? Sure. The agents are fighting over who gets me. They're all willing to give me up to the other guy. Oh, cut it out. She's swell, Alex, honest. She can do the vocals and we'll be back in the running bigger and better than ever. Oh, what's the hurry? Hey, what do you mean, what's the hurry? We've got to get jobs. We've got to eat, don't we? Why? Hey, listen, what is this? The bankroll's getting thin, now Alex. Now time enough to worry when it's gone. Drink this, Davy. Say, are you crazy? Sure. Do you mind, Jerry? Certainly not. I'm a little cracked myself. Yeah, you see, she understands. She knows we heroes have to have a little time to adjust ourselves. Ah, oh, cut that out. The boys aren't going to sit around and wait for the mood to hit you. They're going to get other jobs, and then where will we be? I'll bite where? Oh, listen, listen, Alex. I need a job. And I promised Jerry that she'd get a job with you. Davy, let him alone. Can't you see he doesn't want to talk business? Business? What's that? You know, the thing you do to take your mind off your drinking. <laughs> Jerry, you're a very understanding girl. I wish I was raring to go, but... Unfortunately, I'm not. Forget it. It's all the same to me. Just out of step, I guess. 
You'll catch up. Sure, sure. When? Like Davy says, when the mood hits you. We're almost home, honey. Do you want to go somewhere for a drink? Thanks, Charlie, but I'd rather not. Okay, by me. Say, so I liked you tonight, Stella, and so did I. Well, I guess the show's in for a run. Yeah, another year at least. A year. That's a long grind, isn't it? What's the matter, Stella? You're not yourself at all anymore. Oh, I'm sorry, Charlie. Just tired, I guess. Forget it. <laughs> Come on, darling. You can put the car up, Jim. Yes, Mr. Dwyer. Hey, Charlie! Stella! Who's that? Hey, it's Snapper. Hiya, Charlie. Hiya, Stella. Oh, Snapper. Why, you old son of a gun. <laughs> Snapper of all people. Look, Charlie. A baby carriage. He's a father. Oh, gee, certainly great to see you folks. What are you doing here in New York and out with a baby this time of night? Oh, nothing. Uh, how are you both anyway? Gee, you look great. Uh, same to you. Hey, let's have a look at the baby. No, no, no. no don't touch a carriage, Charlie. What's I it? mean, well, I, I wouldn't disturb him now. Oh, it's a him. Well, no, 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 it ain't. Oh, a girl. Oh, swell, Snapper. Well, to, to tell you the truth, folks, it it ain't either. It's, uh, it's six bottles of scotch. What? What? Oh, oh, a snapper, oh, a bootlegger. How old is it, Snapper? Oh, about six hours, right out of the bathtub. Say, you two, you two sure doing all right, ain't you, huh? Caught your show, Stella. You certainly come a long way. Right up on top. And the music's all right, too, Charlie. Thanks, oh, Snapper. Don't forget, Snapper, you had a hand in all of it, way back in the beginning. Yeah, it's funny, ain't it? You and Charlie on Broadway and Alex down at Greenwich Village. Alex? Down in the village? Yeah, sure, him and Davy. Got a swell band down at Scarby's. I got on the job, happened to run in when they were broke. Anytime you want to come down, just use my name. Well, thanks, Snapper. Well, I got to beat it now. I, um, uh, I got, got to put the kid to bed. <laughs> Goodbye, Snapper. <laughs> Been great seeing you, fella. Yeah, well, so long. It's funny meeting Snapper. I guess he's doing all right. <laughs> the end of a great musician. Yeah, it's funny about Alex, too. I mean, him and Davy together again down in the village. I thought they'd gone back to San Francisco. So did I. Say, what do you say we drop in and see him sometime for old times' sake? Oh, I'd, I'd rather not. Those old times are over. What's the use of trying to rake them up again? It never works. Sometimes it does. How do you mean? Stella, you're not too tired to talk for a minute, are you? What's on your mind? Well, I've, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately making up a lot of speeches about life and marriage and fate. You know, very profound stuff. But it all seems very silly now that I'm sitting here with you like this. Somehow it, it doesn't go with you. You're, you're too honest and direct. What is it, Charlie? All right, here goes. What do you say we call this marriage off? Charlie. Yeah, mark it up to experience. A grand adventure while it lasted, but... Well, don't let's spoil it by beginning to pretend a lot of things we don't feel. You're still in love with Alex, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I suppose so. I thought it was over. But, well, I guess you just can't turn those things on and off. Yeah, yeah, of course not. You, that's what I'm getting at. But, but Charlie, No, I... there aren't any buts about it. I'm a lucky guy to have had you as long as I had. I'm grateful for every minute of it. But I... I want you to be happy. Oh, Charlie, you, you've been swell. But I, I guess I never should have married you, and I, I honestly didn't realize what I was doing. Deep down in my heart, I guess I belong to Alex. I, I always have. <laughs> sure. I know that now. I guess I should have known it all along. Well, you go on and get a divorce, then... You two can make a life for yourselves. A real life. But Charlie, what, what can I say? No, not a word. <laughs> People talk too much anyhow. Ah, you're Stella? Welcome to Scarby's, the pride of Greenwich Village. 
Hello, Snapper. Yeah, did you come to see Alex? Yes, yes, I did. Well, he'll be through in a while. Then we're having our own private party. Party? Sure. Yeah, come on over here. We've got a table all set for us. Oh, but look, Snapper, I just wanted to see Alex. I didn't want to horn in on a private party. Come on, come on. Say, the boys will fall all over each other when they see you, Stell. Hey, Hey, is that Stella Kirby? Hello, Davy. Oh, say, are you terrific. You look like you were born on Fifth Avenue. Oh, you look pretty swell yourself. How are you, anyhow? <laughs> Never better. Say, where's Charlie? I ain't seen him in years. Oh, he's out of town, Davy. Oh, that's a shame. You know, he's the only one of the old gang not here. Hey, Alex. Alex, look what I found. Hey, Stella Kirby, everybody. Stella! Our own little personal gift to Broadway. <laughs> Just like old home week, eh, maestro? Hello, Stella. Hello, Alex. Just in time for the celebration. Sit down. Oh, uh, this is Jerry Allen, Mrs. Dwyer. How do you do? How do you do? How's Charlie? Oh, fine, thanks. Oh, I didn't mean to bust in on you like this. Well, I'm glad you did. You see, we're leaving right after we finish up. Leaving? Yes, yeah, sure. We're on our way to Europe, Stella. How do you like it? Europe? You mean the band? Yeah. One of those horseshoes hit us, finally. Uh, we landed the contract. Oh, that's wonderful, but it's rather sudden, isn't it? Well, you see, they needed a band in a hurry, and we were lucky. Hey, lucky nothing. We've got the hottest band in New York, and you ought to hear Jerry sing. Oh, you're with the band, Miss Allen? Yes, I am. She took your place, Stella. Oh, I tried to, anyway. Oh, Jerry's great. One of the best. Hey, Alex. Alex, there's a couple of friends of mine over there want to meet you. Uh, give them a break, will you? Okay. Excuse me, Stella. Don't be long, mm -hmm. Alex. I won't. I'm sorry I missed hearing you sing, Jerry. Thank you. I enjoyed your show very much. How long have you been with the band? Ever since it started again. I was one of the charter members. Then you must have met Alex soon after he came back from the war. Yes. He was still in sort of a daze from it. I stepped in and helped him snap out of it. <laughs> that was very fortunate for him. For me, too. You see, Alex and I are going to be married. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm really very happy for you. Thanks. All right, boys, let's go to work. Come on, Jerry. Already. Oh, Miss Kirby, would you sing this one? Well, if you don't mind, I'd rather not. Oh, please, not. they'd love it, I know. Yeah, why not, Stella? Sort of goodbye gesture. Just for luck. I'll make an announcement. Well, Stella? <laughs> I guess I haven't much of a chance. I, I mean, I won't have much of a chance to say goodbye to you later, so... Say it now, Alex. Goodbye. And goodbye, and... Good luck to you over there. And good luck to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a great celebrity with us tonight. Miss Stella Kirby. Oh, Noticing the days hurrying by 
Stella. Goodbye, Alex. Goodbye, darling. In just a moment, we bring you back three of Alexander's ragtime band with Alice Faye, Ray Milland, and Robert Preston. During this short intermission, here's Libby Collins with more news from the fashion front. What is it tonight, Libby? Fingertip fashions, Mr. Roy. Oh, rings on her fingers and bells on her toes? Rings on her fingers is right, Mr. Roy. Great big ones. A ring with one huge stone is the smartest thing this season, and topaz and aqua-colored stones the most popular. They're inexpensive and very striking-looking. White beads combined with crystal are especially good for bracelets. They're really lovely. They're so cool and fragile. That means hands have to look cool and fragile, too, don't they? They certainly do. Rough red hands are out of fashion any time, whether a woman wears rings or not. We'll have to do something about that. The best place to start is in the kitchen when you're doing the dishes. Now, don't use harsh soaps that roughen your hands. Instead, try New Quick Lux. It's so wonderfully mild and pure, it helps your hands stay soft, and dainty and feminine. A test of five leading soaps, including Lux, proved that. Hundreds of women took the test, dipping one hand in Lux suds, the other in suds from another soap. They did this for 20 minutes, three times a day, for weeks, under conditions similar to home dishwashing. When their hands were examined, scientists conducting the tests found the Lux hands were still smooth and soft, the other hands rough and red and ugly looking. Think of that one hand test when you're buying soap for your dishes and ask for new Quick Lux. It comes in the same familiar box at no extra cost. It's fast, it's thrifty, and it's so gentle, it'll help keep your hands soft, smooth, and lovely looking. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on the third act of Alexander's Ragtime Band. Six months have passed, and Alexander's Ragtime Band, in England and on the continent, has gone from one success to another. But the months have been empty ones for Stella. Her heart is no longer in her work. Alone on the darkened stage of the Globe Theatre, she sits at the piano, idly picking out a tune. When I'm alone with only dreams of you that won't come true, what will I do? Sorry to keep you waiting, Stella. You want to see me? Yes, I. I'm leaving the show, Mac. Hey, take it easy. What'd you say? Oh, there's no use going on like this. You know as well as I do I haven't been delivering. Well, you're crazy. You've just been off your feed. You'll snap out of it all right. No. No, it's more than that. There's no use messing things up for everybody and running the show. I just can't give, so I'm bowing out. Stella, do you realize what you're doing? What this means to you? Do you know you're throwing away everything you've worked for all your life? Yes, yes, I know. But I'm an old hand at throwing things away. I'm sorry, Mac, but I'm through. Okay. I guess you know what you're doing. 
I'd better tell Mr. Dillingham. Of course, I don't mind walking. They say that London fog makes your cheeks rosy. But I'm afraid it makes you wet, too. I'm sorry, Jerry. We'll get a cab. <laughs> Come on. I was just kidding. I wanted to see if you still remembered how to talk. Yeah, I guess I'm not very good company these days. What's on your mind, Alex? The band's doing swell. You've got a chance to go back to New York if you want on that radio deal. We're sitting on top of the world. What more do you want? Are you going to take that program? Maybe. Jerry. What? I was just thinking. Let's get married. Are you on that subject again? Well, why not? A couple of months ago, it was all set. Let's take the plunge now, tonight. No, thanks. You don't really want to marry me. You're just trying to avoid the bachelor tax. Don't you think we'd get along? Of course we would. Then why not? Because you aren't in love with me, Alex. I used to think you were, but I was wrong. You mean an awful lot to me, Jerry. I know I do. But that's not enough to marry on. I'm not complaining, Alex, and I'm not asking for a thing. Just remember that. Yeah. You think too straight for me, Jerry. But you're a swell person. Thanks. Let's go, shall we? That fog is leaking through my shoes. <laughs> So we bring to a close another half hour of your favorite music as played by Alexander's Ragtime Band. Be with us again next week at the same time. Alexander may be heard nightly in the tropics room of the Drake Hotel in New York. This is Don Howard speaking, and good night. Come on, get back there. Now let them through. Come on, Hi, Alex. Charlie. I tried to see you before the show, but you were pretty busy. Hey, Charlie, it's great to see you. Come on. I want to speak to you. Yes, sir. Sit down, Charlie. How are you? Oh, fine. You? Oh, swell. How have you been doing? Oh, so-so. Say, I hear you're doing all right. Yeah, I've been pretty lucky. Hey, what's all this about a concert at Carnegie Hall? Oh. Well, it's not settled yet, but I've uh, I got an idea people might go for the modern stuff. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Say, uh, you been writing anything, Charlie? Oh, a little. I got a number I thought you might like to hear. I'd be glad to. I'll plug it at the hotel. Oh, thanks. I'll bring it in tomorrow. Uh, how's Stella? I don't know. What? I haven't heard from her in a long time. She disappeared right after the divorce. Divorce? You and Stella divorced? Yeah, just... Just didn't pan out. Well, I, I knew she wasn't in show business, but I, I thought you two were leading a quiet life someplace, raising a family. Hmm, not Stella. Things got a little tough for me, and she walked out. Now well, I should have expected it. What are you talking about? Stella wouldn't walk out on anybody. Well, she did on me. You're a liar, Charlie. Stella's the swellest girl I ever knew. And if she walked out on you, she had a good reason. <laughs> so you're still in love with her? Well, what of it? Well, that's all I wanted to know. She's still in love with you. What? You weren't going to suck me, were you, Alex? Then she didn't walk out. Ah, oh, you know her better than that. We just busted up, that's all. Charlie, I've got to find her. Yeah, sure, but where? I tried for months. Somebody saw her in Chicago singing in some dive. By the time I got there, she'd gone. She's changed her name, dropped right out of the picture. <laughs> And now, and now, folks, our pretty little vocalist, Miss Lily Lamond. Remember the night, the night you said I love you. Remember, remember you vowed by all the stars. Above you. Remember, remember we found a lonely spot, and after I learned to care a lot, you come 
just that you forget me not, but you forgot. Hello, Stella. Hello, Snapper. I tell you when you came in. What are you doing in a place like this? That's what I wanted to ask you. Stella Kirby singing here. Oh, no, no. Lily Lamont. I changed my name to fit the personality. Seen Alex? No. Well, you're going to his concert tonight, aren't you? No, I don't think so. Oh, gee, you ought to go, Stella. This is a pretty big night for him. And he, he'd kind of like to know you were sitting out there. Oh, he doesn't need me. No, well, he's been looking high and low for you, that's all. Yes, but why don't you go and see him? No. No, let him keep thinking of me the way I was. Oh, you're crazy, Stella. You're coming with me. I got a box. No, thanks. I finish up here tonight, and I'm catching a train at 11. Oh, oh look, Stella. Stella, I got to make a telephone call. I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, are you going to call Alex? Alex? No, no. No, certainly not. <laughs> All right. Uh, sit tight. I'll only be a minute. Yeah, I will. Oh, Joe. Joe. Sure. What's the mother? Joe, when, when that fella comes back, tell him I couldn't wait, will you? Sure. Thanks. Where do you want to go now, lady? Oh, I don't care. I've still got an hour to kill before my train leaves. Just drive around. Okay. How about the park? Doesn't matter. Like some music? Kind of helps to pass the time away. Not bad, huh? That guy sure got it. Where's that coming from? Carnegie Hall. Alexander's Ragtime Band. Oh, what's the matter, lady? Don't you like it? Want me to turn it off? No. No, no. No, leave it on. Well, stop. We ought to stop so we can appreciate it. Oh, that's where it comes from. That's uh, Carnegie Hall over there. But I didn't ask to go to Carnegie Hall. I know you didn't. You might as well be standing still as cruising around. All right. Too bad you can't be inside and hear it right. Yeah, the hatch is so that. Sure. I could sneak in the stage and so I do that right. You can turn it off now. I heard all I want. We've got to listen to him play Alexander's Ragtime Band. We can't go without that. I don't want to hear it. Turn it off, I tell you. Why don't you want to hear it? Because I can't, that's all. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play Alexander's Ragtime Band for two reasons. One, because I consider it the first and best of all swing songs. The second, because this particular song means more to me than any other piece of music. Hearing it may take you back. Playing it takes me back. So if you'll forgive me, I'd like to play this song not only for you, but especially for the one person with whom I associated. Did you hear that, Miss Kirby? How did you know my name? Oh, I heard you sing many a time. And you remembered me? Sure. He was great. Oh, thanks. You ought to be in there, Miss Kirby. Go on, why don't you? Go ahead. Out backstage. Please, I, I just wanted to watch a minute. I, I'm Stella Kirby. Oh, Miss Kirby. Well, uh, well of course, Miss Kirby. Uh, come right over here. You can see fine from here, Miss Kirby. Thank you, Stella. Stella. Oh, snap, I, I'm so sorry. Forget it, forget it. Look out there. He sees you, Stella. He, he wants you out there. No. No, I can't. Oh, go ahead. Go on out there. This is your number, Stella. Stella. Come out here. Oh, no, 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 oh, I can't. Go on, I tell you. Go on. Had a girl, Stella. <laughs> Come on, Stella. Sing. Hi, Alex. Sing, darling. Sing. And if you care to hear the Swanee River played in right time, come on and hear. Come on and hear. The 
The curtain falls on Act Three of Alexander's Ragtime Band with Alice Fay, Ray Milland, and Robert Preston. Mr. DeMille returns with our stars in just a moment. While we're waiting, we have time for a song about, well, about something that women all over the country use in their homes every day. And that is Speedy New Quick Lux. Listen to the song of Bubbly Luxa. Millions of bubbles, so speedy lux bubbles will bubble your troubles away. Life is a song with bubbly luxes. Fluffy white bubbles, these thrifty lux bubbles will bubble your troubles away. Here's new quick lux. Turn on the water. Here come the bubbles. You've hardly begun when your work is all done. Oh, life is a song with bubbly luxa. Millions of bubbles, those speedy lux bubbles are ever so gentle, you say. That song tells how new quick lux flakes helps you. They're fast, they're thrifty, and so gentle. Kind to hands and kind to washable colors and fabrics, too. Ask for the generous large box of new quick lux flakes tomorrow. It's in the same familiar package and cost you no more. Here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. Tonight, we welcome three new stars to these footlights as Alice Fay, Ray Milland, and Robert Preston take their first curtain call in the Lux Radio Theater. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. I think we all had a good time here this week doing Alexander's Ragtime Band, and uh, for three strangers, we found our way around without any trouble. <laughs> From what I hear, Alice has been finding her way around most of the United States in the last few weeks. Oh, just part of it, Bob. I went to Pittsburgh for the premiere of Lillian Russell and then on to New York for the first showing there. Which do you like best, Pittsburgh or New York? Pittsburgh. Why? Well, Pittsburgh was new to me. I used to live in New York, but I always wanted to try Pittsburgh. Well, personally, <laughs> I, I think these trips around the country when a picture opens are one of Hollywood's greatest inventions. <laughs> I made one with Mr. DeMille last year. Mm, and you've got to make another one this year, Bob. A good stiff gallop for Northwest Mounted Police. <laughs> if I can only stick with you long enough, boss, I may see the world yet. <laughs> well, well, we're taking a little trip in the Lux Radio Theater next Monday night, Bob. A trip across the Pacific in the play Till We Meet Again. Who's going to be in it, Mr. DeMille? Our stars will be Merle Oberon, George Brent, and Pat O'Brien. In the same parts they played on the Warner Brothers screen production of Till We Meet Again. It's the drama of two people who fall in love the first time they meet and the barrier that stands between them. Each has a strange secret, a secret they dare not tell, and which leads to, well, some of the best drama of the year. Merle Oberon, George Brent, and Pat O'Brien. Well, that's three pretty strong reasons for listening. And so, Mr. DeMille, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. You have three strong reasons for that applause. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Merle Oberon, George Brent, and Pat O'Brien in Till We Meet Again. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in tonight's play were Hal K. Dawson as Snapper, Nancy Leach as Jerry, Wally Mayer as Davy, Lou Merrill as Manager, Warren Ash as Eddie, and Earl Ross, Fred Shields, Walter White, Dick Ryan, Lois Collier, and James Eagles. Irving Berlin's latest musical show, Louisiana Purchase, has already brought the applause of critics and public alike. Robert Preston is now on the screen in the Paramount Technicolor production, Typhoon, in which he co-stars with Dorothy L'Amour. Ray Milland will soon be seen in the same studio's Technicolor picture, Untamed. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. <laughs> Heard tonight with the title song from the picture, Alexander's Ragtime Band, and say, say it with music from the Music Box Review of 1921. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.